Today's experiment is all about investigating chemical reactions. You'll be exploring a variety of different chemical reactions, you'll be using observations to help you explain what's going on, and then you'll write balanced chemical equations to explain it from a chemical point of view. Don't forget that today we're using a large range of different chemicals, some of them are hazardous substances, some of them are toxic, so you should be sure to take care of yourselves, try to avoid exposing yourself unnecessarily to these chemicals. Make sure that when you're done that you dispose of them thoughtfully, don't just tip things down the sink, think about whether they need to go into a separate waste receptacle, and be sure to wash your hands thoroughly before you leave the lab. Now, back to our chemical reactions. The reactions that you're observing may include precipitation reactions, like the one demonstrated here, where we take a small amount of one solution, and then add a second solution in a dropwise fashion. When you make your observations, a good observation is one that will mean something to you. If you read your observation a week later, you'd know exactly what it was you were looking at. So here we can see I have a pale yellow milky precipitate. Some of the other tests you're doing will involve the evolution of a gas. So here we've taken a small amount of a solid material. And now we're proceeding to add two molar hydrochloric acid. Note the immediate evolution of a gas. You'll need to make sure that when you're doing tests on the gas that there is indeed gas being formed. Some of the tests that you'll do in that gas may include holding wet litmus paper in the gas stream and watching for any changes in colour. Or you may prepare some potassium dichromate paper by placing a couple of drops of potassium dichromate on a sheet of paper and holding that in the gas stream. We interrupt this important practical broadcast to share some occupational health and safety information with you. Potassium dichromate, which has been used for this test regularly in the past, is now on the known carcinogen list, so we don't want to expose you to that. Instead, we'll be using potassium permanganate. Potassium permanganate is a strong oxidizing agent. It reacts very strongly with sulfur dioxide gas. So that means that when you start, you'll be using a purple potassium permanganate solution, just a drop or two on a sheet of white paper. And then when you hold it in the gas stream, if the purple solution changes to a brown color, it confirms the presence of sulfur dioxide. If you leave it for long enough, it may even go appear colorless. Right, that's it. We'll return you to your regularly scheduled broadcast. Or finally, you may test using a barium hydroxide film, where you'll dip a metal loop into a solution of barium hydroxide, creating a barium hydroxide film, which you then once again hold in the gas stream. Remember, in these instances, it's the gas you're testing, not the liquid. So take the opportunity today, have some fun. It's all about watching chemical reactions take place, making good experimental observations, and then using those experimental observations to support the chemical equations that you'd like to write as part of your laboratory report. We've discussed the skills that you need to write these chemical equations in your lectures, and you'll find lots of support in the lab manual too. More specifically, you'll find clues for the colours of the solutions on the second page of this experiment in your lab manual. You'll find lots of hints for the precipitation reactions in your solubility table in your textbook. More clues for precipitation reactions, neutralisation reactions, and evolution of gas reactions, both in the theory section of the PRAC and in our lecture notes in some detail. There are strong hints for the metal replacement experiment in your textbook. And finally, thermal decomposition experiments we'll discuss together as a group, and you'll also find very strong hints for how you might go about writing the equations on the second page of your PRAC manual. Good luck!